Hey everybody, welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy and in this video I want to show you some filament 3D printed figures and objects that I printed out on my Creality Ender 3 Pro that I just got recently. So this whole filament printing thing is very new to me, even more so than resin 3D printing and Tuning that machine and getting it honed in at times has been a bit of a pain, but I will tell you that when it works, it's really satisfying to see the type of things that you can print on it and compared to resin, you can have a greater variety of things that you can print on it, not just for details, but for actual functionality. Think things around the home. But we're gonna to stick to like toys and figures and stuff right now. And before we get into some of the bigger things, I've got kids, so if you've got kids, I wanna show you some things that you can print out that may be of interest to them. So here's some little things that I did. This is a little number puzzle. And I got this on printables.com and I am going to leave links to as many of these STL files that I can find in the description down below. So this is just a little number puzzle that you just have to match up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight at the bottom. And then there's this one spot that's always open. So, you know, you basically just move these around until you can get all of the numbers in order. So it's just a little simple number puzzle. And then they also have different versions of this where the numbers get even higher I think you can get into the teens maybe even the 20s so it gets really big if you need like a really good challenge so I got this so I can give it to my five-year-old because she she seems like she has a, a tendency to gravitate towards puzzles and figuring things out stuff like that so I thought that this would be a cool little uh, thing to give to her and moving these little numbers around when you first get it off the print bed it is printed completely flat you don't need any supports, just get the file, boom, print it right there in the middle of your print, uh, in the middle of your bed. And then when you first get it, these numbers are gonna be a little bit stiff. It feels like you have to break them apart. And when you do, everything just starts to slide really easily from then on. Um, it's best if you lay it on a flat surface, that way you can have better control over moving it. But yeah, just really cool and simple and something that, hey, I think even an adult can enjoy. To get this from one to nine and figure it out after scrambling all these numbers, I think that's pretty neat. Another item that I got with the kids in mind, but come on, let's face it, I like it too, is one of these little fidget ring thingamajigs, whatever this is. I'm not sure what it's called, but I'll find it. But it's also printed flat with no supports, and you just kind of fidget with it, you know? It's got these rings, one, two, three, four. It's four rings and like a sphere in the middle. And, you know, you just mess with it you just mess with it. The tolerance is pretty decent, I think, but I know that there's another version with uh, even looser tolerances in case you think like this one was a little bit too stiff. But yeah, like I said, it's really simple to print and using just regular gray filament, like I use the Inland PLA Plus gray filament, then yeah, it's gray, so it looks kind of unexciting, kind of dull, but there's different types of color filament that you can get as well to help these pop a little bit more. So also, good for kids or people who just need something to fidget with and then also as far as the fidgeting goes it's like a little fidget cube so this also prints completely flat kind of like this and it's really nice and loose and then you just kind of just fidget with it you know <laughs> you move it around and I'm just really amazed and fascinated about how something could just start off as just a thin rectangular string of filament on a print bed. And then over time, I think this took maybe, oh man, I don't know, like five hours or something. It just becomes this completely solid object that links together and I didn't have to do anything special for it to do that. So yeah, fidget cube. And then, I've been seeing a lot of things like this. This is an, an articulated gecko. Again, it's really cool just to have. Kids can love it too. And it is printed flat, no supports, nothing special, just flat down on the print bed. And then this comes out afterwards. And what's kind of cool about this thing is that it, the way that it moves, it's very, almost lifelike in a way and there's so many different types of little figures just like this that are articulated there's a lot of like different dragons and stuff that can look really cool especially if you got some color into them but yeah also printed this out something that's really neat for the kids 
And then if you want smaller things, I printed out a lot of different like little miniatures that I showed off in a video comparing resin 3D printing to filament printing, but I got a few more here. Now this is a double headed snake. And with this double headed snake, as you can see, I started to use some color filament and I was lucky enough to have gotten to the point where the filament turned green for this double headed snake. Now when this printed out, it was really small, even smaller than this. And I had to scale it up pretty good just to get it to be this size. But yeah, I like the scale detail on it. Uh, my kid got to it and she really liked it. And then she slept on it and broke the uh, head off. So I had to glue it back together, but yeah, Print it without uh, without any trouble, no supports, nice smooth base. And yeah, this guy looks really good. I think if you were to scale this up, it will be even more awesome. So just a little figure like that. And then I am starting to build up a small little army of these low poly Pokemon figures. So the first one is this really small Snorlax. By default, he's a lot bigger than this, but I printed him small because I was dealing with some failures and I was demotivated and I needed a win. So I printed this guy out, no supports, completely flat, and he came out very nice in orange. And then the next one that I printed out, one that I didn't mess with the scaling with, is Pikachu. You got to have Pikachu. So I was using rainbow filament and at this point it was fading from like a yellowish to a green. So, you know, it kind of works out a little bit in Pikachu's favor. But yeah, if you're into like the low poly stuff, there's a lot of different options for it. Like over on printables, these cool low poly Pokemon. And as you see, they're not to scale, but um, yeah, they, they and they're really kind of quick to print off. I think the Snorlax took about 50 minutes to an hour and Pikachu took maybe about an hour and a half around two hours to print this out and it came out pretty good. I had some stringing issues between the ears, just one of those things that you kind of have to deal with and the ears do feel a little bit jaggy but for the most part I think this Pikachu turned out pretty darn good and I like it. Now as you saw with those last few prints, I've been dealing with some color filament. I bought the Creality Rainbow Filament on Amazon and I've been using it. Now, if you plan on using that filament yourself, just know that every roll is a little bit different and not every strand comes with rainbow gradients. Um, so what happens is you start off with one color and it kind of goes through that entire color And then once you start to get to the end it starts to fade into the other color So it's not a continuous gradient, you know So when I printed this out, this was on the rainbow filament, but it's just orange It's just a solid orange color But as I went through that more colors came out and I got some other figures that I want to show you that I was using for that first one being this astronaut figure here and this was also printed in place without any uh, without any supports there's a really uh, cool maker over on principles that does these remixed versions of figures that need a support but she remixed them so that they don't need support and this astronaut is definitely one of these figures that I went through two or three failures before I finally got him to print successfully due to I believe um, I had a like leveling issue in which my extruder kept knocking into the legs of this guy and just ruining the entire print. So I think that little crossbar section on the printer, I feel like the right side was down lower than the left side. And once it got to a certain height, it just made things go left immediately. Uh, so I tried to do some adjustments on that and this guy, he did print. And fortunately at the time when I did print him, you see that he was fading from like a green to a blue to a purple, which I think is kind of perfect for an astronaut and like kind of that space theme. So I really do like this guy and astronauts, you can just make a few of them and just put them together and it would just totally make sense. You know, you have a team of astronauts and then the next thing that I tried to print after uh, adjusting the printer was this rockin' dwarf here. So if Jack Black was a dwarf, he would probably be doing this right here. And again, that rainbow filament really just stealing the show, going from the green into the blue. 
And that's one of all other things I really like about this color filament or this rainbow or gradient filament is if you don't want to paint or if you just feel like you can't paint or anything like that, then this type of filament will alleviate that for you because you can still get some nice smooth colors on your prints without having to worry about a paintbrush. Now it's not going to be detailed paint like you can see it's going to be all one color in certain areas and it can fade in and out but it still looks really good for a display piece. And coming off of a filament printer, I think this did a really good job. That guitar is actually really quite smooth. The frets are nicely defined and individualized. So yeah, this came out pretty darn good. I like that. He's got that mouth wide open. He's really into it. So those are some of the first prints, but I got some other ones to show you. If you're a fan of Dragon Ball, I'm a big fan of Dragon Ball. You probably see some Dragon Ball figures behind me from Ban Presto, and I don't have a boo, so I made a boo. A super boo. Well, I printed a super boo. This is from the same person that remixed the astronaut here, and here is a closer look at Super Boo from Dragon Ball Z, printed on that gray PLA plus filament. All one piece, it starts at the legs and then it prints both feet at the same time and then it goes up and up and up, bouncing between the two until it can meet in the middle. So that's how he printed out. Here's a look at the back of Boo. You can see like those little exhaust port holes that he has in them. So those are nicely defined too. And yeah, very nice detail on him, uh, especially in the ab area. It looks really nice and smooth, you know, and it has those similar kind of like line marks that you tend to see with filament based printers, especially if you look like kind of like on this little part of his head here, you can kind of see that a little bit, see those lines in it, you know, but once you, if you want to take this to the next level and you want to prime it, spray painting, spray painting it gray or black, and then put some gray on top of that. And then maybe some white on top of the gray for some zenithal action, you know, then those kind of things kind of just start to go away. And then you can always take it to the next level after that, you know, if you want to do sanding and all that stuff. I'm not getting into that right now, but yeah, all one piece. He stands up pretty darn well. He stands up perfectly on his own. Nice wrinkles in the pants. Nice to add the super boot to the collection. For the Marvel side of things, this is a bust of Spider-Man, I believe from the video game, the, the uh, PS4 slash PS5 Spider-Man video game, not Miles Morales, but the other one. And this is from Eastman, as you can see on his base where he puts his name right there. And this is a print that required supports. Now the support that it needed specifically was underneath the chin. I used Cura to slice this file and um, I didn't have any plugins for Cura, so when I did the supports, it auto-generated, and to my knowledge, I couldn't take away or customize it in any way on its own. I might be wrong, but I couldn't figure out how to do it. So it placed supports underneath the chin, and then it placed supports right under this arm here. And I got a little bit of damage right under the chin of Spider-Man. It's not a lot of damage. It's not something I can really see if you look at it head on, but it is there. Probably something that you can just sand down and kind of get rid of, but other than those two support pieces, they were the regular supports, uh, it came out just great, came out perfect. The back is completely flat, you know, it's a bust, so there's no detail on the sides, there's no detail on the back, all the business is right there in the front, and then it just kind of has this kind of concrete base that uh, also came attached to it. And so it didn't take too long to print, you know, if you don't mind waiting six or seven hours, you know, that's not considered too long in this world of filament printing with the older machines. But yeah, really cool looking Spider-Man. Uh, first thing that I tried to print with supports and using those auto supports, and I'm so happy that it actually worked out. Now the next print is a big one. This is a Fester Adams bus that I showed in uh, another video when I was talking about the uh, beginner's guide to slicing software. And this one is from JS Studio. There's a little emblem on the back with JS Studio. And he has the Christopher Lloyd likeness because he was Uncle Fester in the older Adams Family movies. And as you can see, there's Fester right there on the bottom. And this guy took 23 hours to print, 23 hours. That is a long time, but hey, I wanted to get a really big print done and 
this guy turned out great. Just look at that detail on the face. It's just so spot on. Really great job to whoever designed this. Uh, so as I look at them right now, I got a little bit of like stringing kind of going on. I can just take a towel, wet it, and just kind of wipe it down. Get rid of those little strings that are here and there. But those are just really, really minor things. You know, when you just look at that face, look at that face. I mean, this came from strands of filament. Get out of here, man. You got the wrinkles right there, even like the wrinkles on the head. You know, the stitching right there on the collar. This is absolutely incredible. Uh, if you want to look more into the settings which I printed this guy, I, I like to just stay with whatever's working, even if it's not optimal, because sometimes when I deviate, things start to go wrong. So I think I just printed this guy with the regular 20% infill. Probably could have went lower than that, saved myself some time, saved myself a lot of filament, but hey, whatever. Got the job done and he looks amazing. And also with something like this, because it's a bust, if you want to paint it, you don't have to, you know, get super intricate with it. You can use something like rub and buff and get a color rub and buff that you like, and you can make them look silver or gold or whatever other colors that they have to make them look like an actual statue and not like, you know, like a painted figurine, just an easy way to take care of these things. Okay, so we've got one more thing to show. This big chunky piece of plastic Batman from the Dark Knight Returns by Eastman. This bust is absolutely amazing. And I'm not even done because he he has a base that I haven't even printed yet. But when I do, I'm going to put him down on this base. And this guy, 33 hours to print him. 33 hours. That is a long time. In fact, I had to print him twice because when I tried to print him the first time. I thought I had enough filament and then I woke up the next morning to one strand of filament going through that tube and then it was just going to be out. I got some more filament. I tried to load it and restart the print, but I guess on this old Ender 3 Pro, the force that I was using to put the filament in, it ended up knocking the it messed up the alignment and I panicked and I just started over when I should have just manually adjusted the z-axis to get it back to where I think it could have been I probably could have saved the print but you know lesson learned if something goes wrong and you think there's a chance that you can fix it think before you cancel the print because uh, I think I gave myself an L there but anyway we live and learn look at the details of this guy and I particularly love the stitching it looks like around that bat emblem and that fat bat emblem is just it's probably like my favorite depiction of the Batman symbol but it looks like stitching it looks like cloth and that is just absolutely incredible see the wrinkles right there in the cape the wrinkles on the back of his cowl as well and even a little detail of where his ear is right there under the cowl it's just little things like that that just really makes a figure, a statue, a bust, a whatever just pop out. There's stitching lines like right here. You know, and this isn't just stuff that the FDM printer does. I mean, this is part of the design and he looks virtually flawless to me, virtually flawless. Um, he's got a little bit of extra filament kind of up his nose. So it looks like he's got a couple of boogers there or whatever, but I don't care. This bust is absolutely amazing to me. And I'm going to print out that stand and then I'll be able to you know, display him properly. But if you want to save yourself some filament, you can, as you can see, he stands just fine without the um without the stand that he that he comes with but yeah so everything that i showed here today every single figure that i showed here was completely free either from printables.com or uh 3d coat or or my mini factory one of those three sites or combination of them is where i got the stl files for all of these and of course i'll leave links in the description to everything that i can find so if you want to go and print those out yourself you'll be able to do that but it just kind of shows you the wide variety of different things that you can print using an fdm printer or filament 3d printer so if you just want to do bust if you just want to do figures or if you want to do a combination of all those things and even get yourself 
yourself some like hanger space savers that you can print and put in your closet and hang your clothes on. That's one of the benefits of using uh, filament. And there's different types of filament. You know, there's the ABS stuff. There's wood filament. There's there's filament that's really squishy and stuff. It's just, hey man, the world's your oyster. So, and this stuff is only getting better. It's only getting more affordable. So yeah, definitely try this out if you haven't because it's more accessible now than it ever has been before. So that is it, you guys. That's what I've been printing lately on my Creality Ender 3 Pro. And if you're printing out something that you would like to share, let us know down in the comments because I'm always looking for new things to put on that printing bed. So thank you all so much for watching and until next time, take care of yourselves and I'll talk to you later.